Hi, it works. Pretty sure. Okay. Are these new? Okay. I saw oh like oh already oh, waiting. Oh. Yeah. Just turn it down. Okay. Good morning and welcome. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. My name is Olivia and I'll be your cantor for today's Mass. The presider is Father Murray and please join us in singing our opening hymn, 10,000 Reasons, number 560 in our hymnal, 560. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his heart. Good morning. It is as a community who gathers to worship God's holy name that we now sign ourselves in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. In today's Gospel, St. Thomas kneels before Christ and says, My Lord and my God. As we begin the celebration, let us ask God's forgiveness for the times our lives have failed to reflect that profession of faith. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words of what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Yes, blessed Mary, ever virgin, and all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us any of our sin, and bring us everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindles the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grow and rightly understand in what font they have been wasted, washed, and by whose spirit they have been reborn. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who this arranged with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God 
and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. May the Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory. On the evening of that first day of the week, where the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain are retained. Now Thomas, called Dismas, one of the twelve, was not with them when the Lord came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, but Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and he stood in his midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, but have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through his, this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> if you ever wanted to have a gospel that in many ways captures the spiritual life. Today's gospel would be just that. It really talks to you and me about what our life with God should be about. 
And when we're honest with ourselves, what our life with God is often about. Those areas where we could change, those areas where we need to be open, those areas where God wants to speak to you and me. Put yourself into the mindset of those, of those disciples in today's gospel. Those disciples who had followed our Lord for quite a bit of time, they heard him speak with authority, they saw him cure people, but at the moment of his death, many of them abandoned Christ. John, the last evangelist we had, wrote about 50, 60 years after our Lord's death and resurrection. I say that because he had more time to reflect on the experience of Jesus Christ. And he's very much, his, he's very much literary in his approach to talking about that. It's a beautiful, beautiful gospel. But what do we hear John describe? These early disciples in an upper room where many times they've been with our Lord, but the door is locked. And John says they are afraid. They're afraid that what happened to Jesus Christ would happen to them. They associated with them, will they be put to death as Jesus was? Also, very conscious of the fact that many of them abandoned him at the end. They feel guilty. They hear rumors that he's alive. They're afraid. The door is locked. And what does John tell us? Our Lord appears. Our Lord shows up. He doesn't care that there's a locked door. Our Lord shows up. And what the first words were from his mouth was exactly what they needed. Peace. Peace. He knew they were afraid. He knew they felt guilty. That he knew they abandoned him. And he offers them peace. Does it surprise you and me that the second Sunday of Easter today, the church celebrates Divine Mercy Sunday? That gift of God, that gift of peace that he wants to offer to you and me. But in that upper room, we are also asked to place ourselves because isn't it often the case when we find ourselves not living as we should and we find ourselves sinning, we lock the door of our relationship with God. We want to keep him at a distance because we feel guilty. You and I are not proud of the persons we become and we hide. But our Lord, as we hear in today's gospel, wants to give you and me exactly what we need, his presence as experienced through peace. And what do we hear him say? I forgive you. Now you need to go into my world and do the same for one another. I'm going to breathe on you my Holy Spirit. Now go be my disciples. Today, in this upper room, this parish community, that same Lord meets us once again. We are still very much part of that Easter season, that Easter day. And God is saying to you and me on this day, why are you locking the door? Why do you keep God at a distance? Our Lord wants to rise into you, and he wants to rise into me. And he wants to say to each one of us, I want to give you peace. Where can I enter your life so that you can experience that gift? I want to breathe on you my Holy Spirit. That brilliant relationship between father and son is a spiritual relationship, and he wants to give that to you and me. And he wants us to then leave this church and to bring that good news to his world. In today's first reading, you and I have indicators of when exactly that happens. We were, we're going to hear about the Acts of the Apostles throughout the Easter season, and it's really the first history book in our church. It's the beginning of the church. And what you and I hear in today's first reading from Acts is what a community of faith is about. In that very short reading, what do we hear? They come together in God's name, they pray, and everything that they owned was held in common. They weren't wrapped up in stuff. They weren't wrapped up in material goods. What they were wrapped up in is celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ. And when God is the center of who we are, then other things don't become as important. And that's what Christian community is about. We're not into things. We're into sharing the goodness of Jesus Christ because he has breathed on each one of us in baptism and really each day 
the Holy Spirit that we bring to God's world. It's interesting at the end of today's gospel, we hear the famous story of Thomas. How often do we identify him as doubting Thomas? But let's be honest, I think most of you, most of us would say the same thing. I want to believe, Lord, but, but, I need to touch those wounds. I need to see them for myself. That hesitation in truly believing that Jesus Christ is alive in our lives. And what does Jesus say? Come, look at my wounds. Touch the side. Thomas, I know it's not easy to believe. Here, come. I want, I, I want to go there with you. And because he does, Thomas gets on his knees and said, you are my Lord and my God which is a wonderful definition of the Christian vocation to really show the world who it is that is my Lord, who is my God, and I'm proud to profess that. The Christian journey is a journey. It's not always easy. And we have many figures in our past, like Thomas, that remind us of this fact. Our Lord did not point a finger at Thomas. He understood that it's not easy. He didn't point a finger at those people in the upper room He knew that they were afraid. But what he said to them, let me give you what you need so that you can be me in the world today. And that's what he's saying to you and me today. What do you need for me, your Lord? Let me go there with you. Leave this church and be my Christ in the world. And when we do, the empty tomb continues to be celebrated because we truly believe that he rises in us And isn't that what the Christian life is about? We are his body. We are his voice. We are his hands and feet. We are Jesus Christ. And today, we are proud to profess that good news. We get on our knees and we say, with Thomas, you are my Lord and my God, because you've breathed on me your life. Please stand. And as people gathered in faith, you profess that gift before God and one another. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth and of all things. I believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, and true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, but the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. And he has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And I await the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Together we pray. Almighty God, as we await the life of the world to arrive in its fullness, we give us this day to celebrate your life in us. It is in that spirit of service that we now place these our petitions before you. That the church may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may look favorably upon and provide the resources for 
the needs of individuals and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have been separated from God by sin may experience forgiveness and healing through the sacrament of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth by our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven and see the face of God, especially Monsignor Joseph Meehan, John A. Fifter, and Michaela de Filippo. Let us pray to the Lord. For our own needs and intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. God our Father, we sent your Son not to condemn the world, but to save it. We ask you to hear our prayers that we offer for ourselves and for the needs of our world. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing our next hymn, Hallelujah is our song, number 170, number 170. Thank you. 
We have presented simple gifts that we've offered ourselves. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Let us pray. Accept, Almighty God, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to a newness of birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And together let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but during this time, above all, to laud you more gloriously when Jesus, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of our world. By dying, he destroyed death. By rising, he restored us to life. Therefore, we come with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts Sing the hymn of your glory as they now acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, Almighty God, who loves the human race, who no always walks with us in this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, and we are gathered by his love. And when it's once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scripture and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. But do this in memory of me. <laughs> The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Almighty God, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through the passion and death of the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim this work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ 
that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty God, give us life through the Holy Spirit, and grant that we be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, Michael, our Pastor, and with men and women called to leadership in our Church. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, the share in their grief and pain, the joy and hope. We may faithfully bring them the goodness of salvation and go forward with them in the ways of the kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Son, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is complete, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. In communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, with Joseph, John Newman, Augustine, and all the saints of our Church, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who will always be the risen Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Communion is now the invitation. We enter that very spirit as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from everything in life that is evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus, you told the twelve and you remind us today, peace I leave you, it is my peace that I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with each of you. Amen. And may that be our prayer for one another.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Hatred is used to divide us. Hold on to love. Wisdom and truth reunite us. Hold on to love. When prejudice poses us freedom. Do 
Together we pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We have a few announcements before we conclude. We are in need of donors for our blood drive on this Saturday, April the 13th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please sign up at theredcross.org. St. John Newman Adult Group presents what family care caretakers need to know about dementia and Alzheimer's on Thursday, April the 18th at 3.30 p.m. in the Parish Life Center. Celebrate God's love, forgiveness, and healing our special Divine Mercy Holy Hour today at 3 p.m. Give yourself and your family the gift of one hour to enjoy the peace and grace of God's divine mercy. All are encouraged to take our Easter gift bag and also an Easter meditation book. They're available at the doors of the church. And finally, most important, please join us today in our gathering room after Mass for Hospitality Sunday. <laughs> May the Lord be with you. Please bow your head for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you receive the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be, be united with him in heaven. <clears throat> Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. <laughs> Go unannounce the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks. Please join in singing our last <laughs> hymn, number 174, in our hymnal, number 174. Hallelujah. 